But 2,500 years ago, this fellow Buddha, he realized that there should be something else to life. And then he started to search. And he found the answer. Yes, there is something else to life. It is not just the body. This kind of awareness is the purpose of life. Spirituality is totally misunderstood. What is spirituality? You do meditation, you go to the temples, you visit some places of worship, you go for pilgrimage. Is that spirituality? No. Yogic philosophy says it is about an outlook towards life. There is a material outlook, which I would also say you can call it mental outlook or spiritual outlook. Spirituality, as I perceive now, I keep changing. I'm, I'm not consistent because I keep growing. <laughs> so I have no burden that I have said this before and I should stick to that. No. As I perceive now, spirituality is not natural. Materiality or materialism is natural. The mental outlook towards life is natural. Why I say so? Yesterday we were talking about the law of karma, right? Now what is binding us? This law of karma, what in us is bound by this law? When we die, what happens to us? The body is there. I'll be dead. My body is there, intact maybe. It won't decompose immediately, you know. And yet people will say that I'm gone. Who is it that is gone? The body has not gone anywhere. Exactly. It is the mind. So what we refer to as a soul has nothing to do with spirituality. The soul is everything that we are now minus the body. So this soul is taking up another body and then we are born again. Our birth is decided by our mind. It's not decided by spiritual consciousness. So materialism is very natural. You know when you have a baby you give anything to the baby what will it do? It will try to eat it. It will try to put it in the mouth. The whole consciousness, all of us, we were given toy, we did not play with the toy, we didn't know what to do. Our whole consciousness was into food. And now you go around any big city, whether Bali or any city, any metropolitan, any even smaller cities, you go to any mall and look at the number of restaurants they have. Food court. Hundreds of restaurants. So we have not grown. Our whole consciousness, our whole focus is to this state on the food. We are concerned about this body and the rishis of old they call this body anamaya kosh, food sheath. So our consciousness is focused on that particular sheath. So it is not natural for us to become spiritual. You have to put some effort. And why should you put some effort if you are still enjoying the food sheath? Sickness can be a blessing. Sickness can be a blessing. It is just like those uh, speed breakers on the road, you know, the highway. <clears throat> Time comes when I realized, okay, my body is dying. I am going to die. What now? 
So sickness can be a blessing <clears throat> to make you have a U-turn. Not many people have a U-turn. They are enjoying their life. Why should they even think about spirituality? At the most, you'll be thinking about healing. Healing is not spirituality. Healing is not even soul consciousness because what is healed is your body. And we keep on saying this like a parrot, you know, body, mind, healing, you know. Mind is the sole cause of problem. You cannot heal the mind. Where is the mind? Emperor Wu, in China, thousand plus years ago, went to see Bodhidharma. And he said, my mind is troubling me. The sage Bodhidharma says, fine, no problem, you come to the monastery at 12 o'clock midnight or 3 a.m., whatever, I forgot now. It has been 1,200 years. <laughs> come to the monastery and let us find a solution. So he comes to the monastery and Bodhidharma is sleeping. I said, my God, this sage, he promised and he's sleeping. And I am the emperor of China. So he told one of the disciples and the sage got up. He said, yes, you have come, fine, come here, sit down, have tea. Say, no, it's not about tea, it's about my mind. I have a problem with my mind. Okay, it's very easy, give me your mind, let's break it. He said, you're crazy, how can I give you my mind? So Bodhidharma says, look, if you cannot give me your mind, the mind is not there. So where's the problem? And the emperor was awakened. He was enlightened. Even though he was enlightened again, because of the company he kept, politics and all this, he forgot everything again. So spirituality has nothing to do with politics. Politics is totally, you know, Different direction. Going London, looking Tokyo, you know. <laughs> Spirituality and politics cannot go together, not in this age. I have never seen a politician who is spiritual. No. He can show, he can make an appearance that he is spiritual, he is religious, but no. You won't find politicians. So either you become spiritual or you become politician. <laughs> the choice is yours. Leave them alone. They are different Different people, you know, leave them alone. Let them, let them take care of their chairs, their offices. We have nothing to do, nothing against them, but nothing to do with that. Now, if the mind is taking up the body, that means material consciousness, food consciousness is very natural. It is only when you have a speed breaker that you realize, oh my God, what is happening to me now? And then you try to find the answers to your essential questions. What is this? 2,500 years ago, India was like Europe 10, 15, 20 years ago. Affluent. The, until 170, 200 years ago, you are on the street of London and you see anybody going to the east. You ask them, where are you going? India or Indonesia. We were the center of spice trade. We had all the money, not a single beggar on the street. And we did not realize that all that affluence cannot make us happy. But 2,500 years ago, this fellow Buddha, he realized that there should be something else to life. And then he started to search. And he found the answer. Yes, there is something else to life. It is not just the body. This kind of awareness is the purpose of life. This kind of seeking is the purpose of life. It's a game. It's a game. But if you are just focusing on the body, you are just focusing on healing of the body, blah, 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 then you are in the first season. You are not going to the second season. 
it is watching the same episodes over and over over and over you know go to the second season find out what is the purpose of life and here the yogic philosophy the hindu philosophy says you have to find it yourself nobody can help you there is no savior krishna can come down hundreds of times he is not going to save you nobody can save you i use my vulgar language it's your own shit you have to clean it <laughs> nobody is going to clean it for you nobody can save you nobody can liberate you no guru can help you what the guru does is just to point it out to you the spade is a spade bad is bad good is good now you have to see what is relevant to you sometime poison is also good to kill some bacteria in your body viruses fine so there is no such thing as permanent good there is no such thing as permanent bad and therefore we have no idea of mr devil there is no devil there is no satan there is no satan there is no satan we have to find the purpose of life by ourselves and there comes meditation meditation is to find this purpose of life to find why i have reincarnated all of us including myself all of us who have reincarnated who are now with this body were in the body consciousness at the time of our birth some of us have moved on we have somehow got some experiences and we have moved on to the second season some of us are still in the first season but you need some effort you need some effort to break through this mental consciousness and to find a higher purpose and that is once again meditation is coming there